Well, salt water in southern Nevada. Not too often do those words really get uttered in the same breath, but for our neighbors just to the west in California, that's a whole different story. In tonight's report on the California water hogs, 8 News Down investigator Kyle Payne looks at why all that salt water along the California coastline is not turned into drinking water. Kyle. Brian and Denise, that coast is 840 miles long, but not too much of it is being used to solve the war over Colorado River water. In San Diego, 10%. In Los Angeles, the number is zero. Zero. It's expensive, and most California residents are not enthusiastic about disrupting their beaches and shorelines. Growing up, uh, it was, you know, drought was the way of life. Having grown up in Las Vegas and spending her entire adult life in Southern California. And then moved out to San Diego for college and been here since. Environmental engineer Michelle Peters knows the deal. It's very complicated. I definitely understand it, the Nevada side more from the residential perspective. We have growing up there. And as the technical compliance manager for the giant water treatment plant developer Poseidon at this desalination plant in Carlsbad, right across the street from this magnificent beach where the deep blue Pacific seems to go on forever. Peters knows people in Las Vegas are tired of waiting for California to start using some of that beautiful ocean water to help alleviate the crisis on the Colorado River. I understand a decent amount on, on, on each side. The Carlsbad plant is an impressive network of pipes and potions, tubing, and tanks. We're producing some of the highest quality drought-proof water. We're providing 10% of the San Diego region's water supply here. But getting a desalination plant funded, permitted, and past the scrutiny of the neighbors is not always a breeze. Just ask the people here in Huntington Beach, who have been battling for decades about putting one on this industrial site. That's never going to happen here. Huntington Beach is one of just a handful of proposed desalination sites in California. One day they're building, and one day they're not. In fact, there's only a dozen existing desal facilities in the entire state, which amounts to less than one desalination plant for every three million people in California. Getting the Carlsbad plant to where it is today was, well, no day at the beach, considering it took almost 20 years to get it permitted. It's a process they're very familiar with in the lovely oceanside city of Dana Point, where another engineer, the project's general manager, Rich Shintaku, is hoping the South Coast Water District's proposed desalination plant holds water. Well, the project's going pretty well. Pretty well, maybe. But you can hear the hesitation in Shintaku's voice. That's because, among other things, the area around Dana Point is vulnerable to earthquakes. And if the ground were to shake too much, it would rupture their pipeline. And the whole project would be sunk. This project cost $140 million just to get started. And they expect it to cost $6 million a year just to run the plant if it comes to fruition, as expected, in 2028. And that's why we need to provide a local drinking water solution. Shintaku's been in the water business for 30 years. Early in his career, his job was to keep track of the Colorado River. It's a very, very large problem, and that's, that's an understatement, right? Right, which is why Southern Nevadans want more results. But these desalination plants are expensive and a hard sell for most Californians. And generally, California likes to protect their coastline, likes to protect their beaches. Bill Hazenkamp is the manager of Colorado Resources for the Metropolitan Water District, which supplies water to some 19 million Southern Californians. He says between the high price of building these plants, getting Coastal Commission approval, and having to build unsightly plants on gorgeous waterfront real estate. So desal is a piece of the puzzle, but it's not going to solve all the problems. All right, so Kai, you mentioned one of those took 20 years to actually bring to fruition. Is it the expense or is it just the aesthetics of the plant? It's, it's both, both. But to be fair, the officials we spoke with about desalination made sure to tell us that water reuse and recycling was a far less, far less expensive and controversial, less time consuming opinion option than desalination. Still, in Los Angeles, for instance, it's only 2% of the amount of their water supply being recycled. Mm. Thanks for that, Kyle. Maybe uh, stay away from the beaches in California for a bit. Good idea. <laughs> All right.